Well, happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, here on the 24th. This past week, we had uh, CNPC TV actually visit our studios here. So, again, they came out, did some filming, and uh, top secret for now, but uh, we'll share some of what they uh, talked about here uh, in the week ahead. So, again, it was uh, cool to have the real TV guys out in our studio. Thought we'd talk about this uh, interesting and sad uh, event here with this uh, Palermo Adio Bayesian yacht that sank. Again, a lot of weather factors that came into play here, and... Uh, you know, just human error is always a factor as well. But um, data on the right is a little bit busy here. But uh, what we think happened here is that there was uh, these mountains and hills just to the south of Palermo, where the yacht was uh, anchored uh, out in the bay there, was um, kind of a land breeze south. And then we already had a cold front come through, so the predominant flow is northwest, which creates kind of a cyclonic pattern. But uh, we can clearly see what was a wind gust of 40, gusting to 52 miles an hour right at the time of the sinking. Um, eyewitness reports suggest it was a EF0 type water spout. Uh, but again, the data here very um, clearly outlines kind of what happened here. So earlier in the day, we, prior, we had uh, a cold front come through. They were very, very hot in Palermo in the 90s, low 90s. And then the temperatures began to fall again with this cold front that uh, cleared uh, Palermo. And then again, the ocean temperatures also about 84 degrees. So in the morning, temperatures are around 69 degrees. And um, so again, we'd have what would be called a land breeze. Again, there's very hilly terrain, obviously, uh, just uh, across Sicily. And uh, Mount Etna is the huge uh, mountain volcanic eruptions uh, still happening uh, to the more to the eastern part of the island here. But uh, So again, you had kind of an offshore breeze, typical when the, at nighttime. So winds coming off the mountains south out into the water with the typical more northwesterly flow behind a cold front. So you have kind of the cyclonic circulation that you can see here. And again, the yacht was right here. Um, so... Again, kind of classic, had a good temperature contrast between the 84 degree temp water temperatures and 69 degree land breeze, about a 15 degree temperature change. So again, classic scenario here to get, create a, a water spout type scenario. These are not really tornadoes, they're not really developing in the exactly the same format, but again, uh, very common. I remember in Florida, stationed at McDill Air Force Base, uh, very frequent under with an offshore flow and warm gulf temperatures, um, you know, right conditions, you can get these uh, water spouts that form with actually pretty uh, not intensely strong, um, you know, cloud systems, you know, they're only maybe, you know, 15, 20,000 feet, so not really a thunderstorm per se. So again, some of the parts, unfortunately, here were just a, a sad event here in uh, Palermo. Looking at La Nina here, we're clearly uh, getting closer and closer. Again, it'll probably be officially named at some point here in the next 30 to 60 days again. So again, we clearly see the ocean temperatures um, weakening, we cooling. We actually believe that uh, this La Nina will be a quick hit and then we'll go into a, a neutral phase as we go into uh, 20, spring of 2025 here. But very clearly you can see these uh, ocean temperatures versus last year uh, across the equatorial Pacific. Many, many factors here that are influencing our overall weather pattern here in the weeks and months uh, and seasons ahead here. But again, La Nina is definitely uh, uh, just about probably to be declared one way we know what's happening here is we look at last year, we had no fire season. Wildfire season was non-existent, at least in 28 years um, at this point in the season here. So it was you know, way, way below average last year. Uh, chart here at top shows uh, greens are where the wildfire acres burn were way below average, and yellows and oranges and reds are way above average. So we're already at 24% of the above average in terms of wildfire acres burned. Uh, again, about... Um, 5.4 million versus this time last year, only 1.7 million. We believe this is a two-year cycle here, so this year and next year. In fact, next year we think is quite a bit worse, uh, probably getting this time next year, probably the, the most in a, a decade. Uh, so, again, this is just a, one thing that we see with the La Nina amongst all the other cycles, again, dozens of cycles that are important. Uh, interesting that we have uh, Hawaii here uh, threatened by a tropical storm uh, Hone and uh, Hurricane Gilma. Both, one will make a trek to the south and one's likely to weaken rapidly uh, Gilma and uh, head to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. So hopefully not a direct hit here uh, for the Hawaiian Islands. I think if we look at these 14-day storm tracks again, you kind of see that one uh, Hone goes to the south and Gilma to the north. Hopefully missing Hawaii. Let's hope that's the case. See all this rain off Africa. It's very concerning. Africa is way above average there in equatorial Africa in terms of rainfall. Uh, so soil's wet, and again, as those systems come off of Africa into the main development region of the Atlantic, uh, we have to look out here as we're getting into the peak two months, September and October, for the uh, core hurricane season, which we do believe is going to be active here. Ocean temperatures are favorable. Africa wetness is favorable. Uh, we're diminishing the dust off of Africa. So again, uh, no wind shear to speak of, really, in the uh, Atlantic Basin. So again, a lot of things to be concerned about here as we go. We still think that the U.S. gets hit by a couple hurricanes and very potentially a major hurricane. 
Look at last week, week ending here tonight, here again, the 24th. Uh, here in the U.S., it was another cool week, uh, 3.5, cooler than last year, cools in six years, 12th, cools in 39, so below average national temperatures. It was actually downright freezing here. Again, many areas here in West Virginia and the high elevations, the Appalachians actually got uh, into the 30s. Um, here at our headquarters, we were down to about 49. So a lot of daily record lows set this past week in the Northeast. So again, uh, a good week for um, back-to-school apparel-type sales. Precip dry, 11% dry in last year, dry in 21 years, second dry in 39. So again, cool dry, not ideal. We'd like to have cool and wet <clears throat> to drive uh, retail seasonal sales and back-to-school sales, but again, good nonetheless. Uh, there in the UK, again, coolest in 10 years so they were another cool and wet uh, so again favorable for uh, early fall categories there as well look at this week again a volatile pattern here cool to warm to cool is going to kind of be the theme here as we go with a kind of a rapidly moving weather pattern so don't get used to the weather because it's going to change here pretty quickly uh, here this week again 1.7 warm in last year warmest in 11 years second hottest in 39 years so very warm week <clears throat> so all that cool weather we had last week's gone here in the east and it gets a little bit cooler there in the rockies Rainfall is actually down about 35%, driest in nine years, fifth driest in 39 years uh, nationally. And if we look at the next week again, this is actually the start of meteorological fall, first full week of meteorological fall. And meteorologists say one September is the start. We've still got about uh, 28 days according to the sun, uh, you know, 20th of September for sun saying it's fall. But uh, cool, definitely uh, adding up to a um, early start to uh, the fall season here. So 2.1 cold in last year, coldest in seven years to start meteorological fall. 15th cools in 39, so below average national temperature. So again, cool to hot to cool. Again, it's kind of the theme. Look at all that heat heading to the Pacific Northwest. 153% wet in the last year, wettest in six years, ninth wettest in 39 years. So kind of a cool wet week. Uh, that is kind of the theme for a strong seasonal sales week. Uh, again, uh, back to school, apparel sales. Again, things you'll need to start thinking fall. Uh, certainly that uh, upper Midwest, Great Lakes, uh, interior Northeast are going to be the favorable spots. So the world two-week aggregate here was a little misleading here because you're, you're blending warm and cool and warm and cool again. Uh, so again, um, but again, the general theme is it's going to be pretty hot there in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, Again, mixed bag. The Pacific Northwest is definitely the hot spot uh, here in the in the U.S. And uh, again, this rainfall. Again, look at all that rainfall across Africa there, Central Equatorial Africa. So soils are very wet as tropical waves, which they're always there in Africa, come off out into the Atlantic. Uh, just suggests we're going to have have these waves. They're definitely going to be there in Africa, and as they come out into the Atlantic, we we expect a very active uh, peak season here for the 2024 hurricane season. Um, so with that, folks, have a great week, and we'll talk to you again this time next week. <laughs>